So we all know that worship invites the presence of God. And so often we wonder that what song should I sing for the Lord? What kind of music should I sing for the Lord? As my worship that is going to bring down his presence. Like what strategy do I have to use in order to make sure that when I go down to seek the Lord, that his presence is going to come and fill my prayer room, you know, and I'm going to be literally in God's presence and experience him in a way that is so real. So we have a longing for the presence of God and oftentimes we wonder, is it the music that I'm supposed to sing? What am I supposed to do? How do I enter this tangible presence of God? We all know that God lives in us as believers, but at the same time, there's also this way that God manifests himself when we are in that quiet time, you know, like when we give God that time of prayer and seeking him, there is a way that the Spirit of God comes to manifest himself in our lives or in our midst in a way that, that makes God to be so, so real and so tangible, you know, and oftentimes we get to wonder like, how can I pray or how can I worship in a way that is going to bring the presence of God. So many times when we think of worship, what comes to our mind is singing a beautiful song for the Lord Jesus, which is part of worship, of course. And we often think of worship as just saying these beautiful words to the Lord, you know, just telling the Lord, Lord, you're so wonderful. Lord, you're so beautiful. And we often think that Maybe the way that we're going to say these words, maybe if we say certain words, maybe if we sing certain songs before we pray or during our prayer, maybe it's going to invite the presence of God. So I want to share something that the Lord Jesus Christ taught me on this topic of worship, you know, like what is true worship? We read in the book of John, when, when Jesus was talking to the woman, the Samaritan woman in John chapter 4, Jesus Christ was telling her that the Father is looking for people who are going to worship him in truth and in spirit. And Jesus was actually telling her that it's not about the place. It's not about worshiping God on a certain mountain or in a certain place that is designated. But the thing that God truly cares about are people who are going to worship God in spirit and in truth. So how do we worship God in spirit and in truth? The biggest worship that we can give the Lord God is our lives. It's not just a matter of going down on our knees and singing a beautiful song for the Lord or going down on our knees and lifting up our hands and saying this, these beautiful words to the Lord. But true worship is a life of obedience. The Bible says that obedience is better than sacrifice. When we live a life of obedience to the Lord, we are living a life of worship and we are worshiping God in truth and in spirit, even without saying a single word. Because when we live a life of obedience to the Lord, everything that we do, things that we say, everything about us will constantly be bringing glory to the Father and it's as though we are always in that place of prayer on our knees and lifting up his name and bringing glory to him but instead of our words only being the ones that are doing that instead our whole lives and our whole actions are doing that when we go down on our knees and we lift up our hands and we start to sing beautiful songs to the Lord Jesus Yet we are living in a life of sin. We are living in a life of disobedience. We are living without the fear of the Lord. The words that we say, no matter how beautiful, the music we sing, no matter how beautiful, it means nothing to the Lord. He says obedience is better than sacrifice. Your obedience is much more important even than prayer and fasting. If we come to the book of Isaiah, in Isaiah chapter 58, God was rebuking the Israelites. 
who were fasting so often, you know, they were, they were going in prayer and fasting so often, yet their lives were so contrary to what God wanted. Their lives were in disobedience to the Lord. And God was denouncing their fast. And he was saying, you have fasted so much. And you say that, why doesn't God pay any attention to all my fasting? You may ask yourself, why doesn't God pay attention? I have been seeking him in prayer and fasting. I have been singing all these beautiful songs to the Lord. I have been telling the Lord all these beautiful words. Lord, I love you. Lord, I adore you. Lord, you are so wonderful. But why doesn't God pay any attention to me? But the Lord said that obedience is better than sacrifice. The worship that is acceptable to the Lord, the worship that Jesus Christ said that the true worshipers are going to bring to God, it's their whole lives laid down at the feet of Jesus. That is the only worship that is acceptable to the Father when our lives are laid down at the feet of the cross so that it doesn't matter what we want, it doesn't matter what our opinion is, all we want is to glorify Jesus in the things that we do and say and everything about us. Sometimes people say, oh no, you know, my obedience doesn't matter to Jesus because there's nothing that I can do to merit his favor. There's nothing that I can do that is going to be pleasing to God. There is half truth and half lie in those sentiments. The half truth that is there is, somebody is saying, there's nothing good that I can bring to the Lord. You know, which of which the truth in that is, that our own righteousness is not good enough to be acceptable because it is dented. Our own human righteousness is dented by sin because all of us have fallen short of the glory of God. So we become acceptable by the blood of Jesus. But at the same time, why was David set apart for God? Of all the people, why is it that God said about David that I have found a man after my own heart? He was obedient to the Lord. He was careful to be obedient to the Lord. Why does the Bible tell us the things that are pleasing to God? The Bible actually says that a, a meek and quiet spirit is very pleasing to God. So while all these things that we do for the Lord are obedience, they cannot earn us a place in heaven. It is the blood of Jesus that earns us that place. But at the same time, when we live in obedience to the Lord, it shows who our true Lord really is. That is why Jesus said, why do you say to me, Lord, Lord, yet you don't do what I say? Again, that is why Jesus said that not everyone who says, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of the Father so children of God are called to do the will of the Father. And when we are in obedience to the Lord, it is acceptable and it is very pleasing. It is a sweet fragrance to the Lord. We can have the most beautiful voice, bring the most beautiful instruments and sing the most beautiful words to Jesus Christ. But if that person who is singing those songs if their life is not yielded to the Lord, you may sing such beautiful words, very beautiful voice, very beautiful instruments. But if you are living in disobedience to Jesus Christ, if you do not regard the Lord, neither does he regard your worship. Neither does he regard those beautiful words that you're telling him. And actually to the Lord, to man, your, your voice may sound so beautiful. But to the Lord, it sounds so very ugly. And on the other hand, somebody doesn't have, who doesn't have a beautiful singing voice can be singing for the Lord, no beautiful instruments. But their, their heart is truly yielded to Jesus. And they really want to honor Jesus. To man, their singing may sound detestable, you know. Their singing may sound bad. But to the Lord, it's such beautiful music.
that is pleasing. So when we come to worship the Lord uh, during our prayer time and during our prayer and worship, it's more about our hearts than the words that we actually speak. It's more about our hearts. Are our hearts truly yielded to Jesus Christ? Are we living a life of disobedience, disregarding the Lord at every turn? Or are we living a life of obedience? Because that is how we worship the Father in truth and in spirit. It is by living for Him. Then even when we come and sing a beautiful song, it is so pleasing, it is so beautiful to the Lord. I remember I had shared this vision where God had actually showed me this vision of how true worship is to Him. And I'm going to link it in the description box so that I don't uh, re say the same vision again. So our obedience to the Lord is something that we nurture. If we become careless and at every small opportunity, we just disregard the Lord and say, you know what, I'm just going to do whatever I want. You know, every, every little opportunity that we have where we have to make simple choices in our everyday life. And you know deep down your heart that what I'm about to do is displeasing to God. But if we go ahead and, and do that and just disregard the Lord that, you know what, I'm going to repent later. You know, you get used to, to living a life of disregarding the Lord. But when you start to honor the Lord in the simple ways, in the small ways, you, you're going to find that you start honoring him more and more because even the Bible says the one who has will be given more. The one who doesn't have, even what they have will be taken away. So when you start to disregard the Lord slowly, finally you're, go, you're going to find that even the little fear of God that you had is gone because your conscience has been seared. The Bible tells us that in the last days, people's conscience is going to be seared by sin such that you are going to be living in sin and, and you're going to be saying, I'm not even convicted. Yes, you cannot be convicted because your conscience is already dead. That part of you that was created to have the fear of God, it's already gone. It's dead. So you are not convicted and you keep living in sin and you keep saying, I'm not convicted, so I'm not in sin. And you keep saying, you know, the Bible says that uh, if your conscience condemns you, but the Bible also warns us that people's conscience are going to be seared. They're going to be killed, destroyed. And that's what happens when you, when you get used to living a life of sin. So finally you come into the presence of the Lord and you start to sing all these beautiful words and God is distant from you. But when you start to live in obedience to the Lord, when you honor Jesus, when Jesus becomes important to you and you start to honor him, when you come to pray and you start to sing music to the Lord or you start to tell the Lord um, all those beautiful words of glorifying him, that is what is good and acceptable to the Lord. The presence of the Lord is going to inhabit your praise. The presence of the Lord, the Spirit of God is going to inhabit your praise. And you know, God is going to be near you. So true worship is actually more than a song. It's actually more than a few words that we say to the Lord. True worship is our whole life yielded to the Lord Jesus Christ. So we live in a world that brainwashes us to see sin as normal from the time that we're little children and we grow up in, in societies that glorify sin and see holiness and obedience to Jesus as strange and as undesirable. So many of us grow up without even the fear of God. And even when you have the fear of God, it's very easy to lose it. So it's very important to ask the Lord to give us his fear so that we may honor him, so that we may hate sin and choose to honor God in the smallest things that we do. Because the Bible tells us that the Father is looking for worshipers who are going to worship him in spirit and in truth. He's not looking for a music band. He's not looking for, for musicians with beautiful voices. He's not looking for beautiful instruments. He is looking for hearts that are yielded to him. 
listening to the instructions of God and obeying him because he says obedience is better than sacrifice. To obey the Lord is better than anything that you can give to him. To obey is the greatest gift that you can give. It's more than anything you can give to the Lord. It is better than any big sacrifice that you can give. It's better than any beautiful song, better than music. But our lives yielded. God wants our hearts. He wants our whole lives yielded at the feet of Jesus Christ. 